Hi everyone and welcome back to this episode of The Turn. Today we are at one of the most established golf courses in the Klang Valley, the Sultan Abdul Aziz Shah Golf and Country Club. I wonder what amazing dishes I'll be trying this time and to check out the course which was designed by the five-time Open champion Peter Thompson. Volvo Syme Derby Swedish Auto has also given us this spacious XC60 which is one of the best-selling SUV models in the market. The Volvo XC60 is one of the best looking SUVs on the road as it gives you the right balance between comfort and control, especially for those long journeys. The high-tech infotainment touchscreen is super sleek as you can select your power and choose between five driving modes. This allows you to tailor the car's behavior to your mood and find the perfect setting for the road you're on. And you can say goodbye to the tangled cables as this car introduces wireless device charging. The tailgate of the XC60 is also amazing because of its hands-free feature. The trunk has a huge space that is perfect for an SUV car. If you are ready, join me as I'm heading to the clubhouse to taste the delicious dishes served by the Sultan Abdul Aziz Shah Golf and Country Club. Hi guys, so it's that time of the day again where I get to try all their delicious dishes. I've started off by ordering the watermelon lychee drink to cool off a bit. Excuse me, madam. You say watermelon lychee. Enjoy your drink. Thank you so much. Welcome. This is definitely more than enough to cool you down. You can taste that the watermelon has been freshly blended. And I'm definitely going to try one of the lychees inside. Super sweet and juicy, just as how I like it. Excuse me, madam. Yes, uh, you're so echo. Thank you so much. Enjoy your meal. Okay. Wow. So because it's Hari Raya this week, I'll be trying out a local Malay dish, the soup echo. Let's have a go. Mm. The soup is quite peppery with a really rich beefy flavor, which I really like. Okay guys, so next up, I'm trying the ginger spring onion beef with some white rice. Let's try some of the beef on its own first. Mm. That's really, really soft and tender. Let's add some of the rice. Mm. The flavor is really savory. You can taste that bit of spring onion and ginger. It's not too strong, really, really well balanced and definitely something that you can either have as a main or a side dish with another meal. My rating of today's food is definitely a 10 out of 10. But let's see if they fall into the not so gila, gila good or gila awesome meter. As one of the pioneers of commercial clubs in the country, the golf course opened for play during the Malaysian golf boom in the early 1990s. Located in the royal township of Shah Alam, the 27-hole golf course is crafted by Australian legend Peter Thompson. The dramatic layout utilizes the natural undulations of the terrain, along with numerous hazards to create an excellent test for golfers of all levels. The golf course consists of three nine-hole loops, the President Nine, Sultan 9 and Alam Shah 9. Each 9 has its own distinct personality, providing golfers with a diverse and enjoyable golfing experience. The distinctive clubhouse has a wide range of sports, recreational and F&B facilities, including an airy golfer's deck with excellent views of the golf course. Sultan Abdul Aziz Shah Golf and Country Club has hosted numerous big events over the years, including the Volvo Masters of Malaysia from 1994 to 1997 and the Malaysian Amateur Open. The 
The Sultan Abdul Aziz Shah Golf and Country Club's signature hole is the challenging second hole of the Sultan 9, also known as the Dragon Hole. This par 5 demands length and accuracy as it has a tight landing area and crosses a stream before climbing to a tricky green. I'm now at the club's signature hole, hole 2 of the Sultan 9, also referred to as the Dragon Hole. So joining me today is committee chairman, David Tong. Yeah, David, nice please tell me, why is this considered a signature hole? And also, why is it referred to the Dragon Hole? This hole is one of the toughest among the 27 holes. That is why it's partly also we have named it as a signature hole. Why we say this is a difficult hole? Basically, you look at the, this cost, the fairway is narrow. From the left hand side, we have our penalty areas. On the right hand side is our OBs. And approaching the green, there is another penalty area crossing the fairway. So, with all this additional obstacle that you see in this course, that is why we have named it a Dragon Hole. So, David, please tell me from a player's standpoint, how would different levels of golfers approach this hole? Basically, we look at we have two types of golfers that we realize. Mm -hmm. One is called the scratch player and one is called a boogie player. Of course, the boogie player is all the what you call a double digit handicappers. Mm -hmm. For the scratch player, it's always a slow, lower single handicappers. So this is a par five and it's a low and it's a low index hole. It's quite a difficult hole and with a length of 500 meters. A scratch player player can easily drive to about 250 meters. So for them uh, to reach the green in two, maybe they are able to reach the green or they may not, but that is around the apron of the green. But for the boogie player, you are not able to reach in two, basically, or three. Basically, you must also realize we have a lot of additional obstacles on the right, which is an OB, on the left is where the penalty area and Approaching the green, about 130 meters to the green, there's another, another penalty area. Whereby for the boogie player, it is not able to put three to the green. So they have to play a four, which they have a layout for the third shot before they can reach the green. That is why we say this hole is a low index hole. So my suggestion for the low player, for the boogie player, you are to play a four shots to the green. For the scratch player, maybe if you are long hitter, long hitter, you are able to reach the green in two. So Mr. Tang, please tell me, now that we've made it to the green, we can see that it's really big and tricky. What is the toughest pin position that we can expect? Now, looking at the green, it's definitely very lengthy. And not only lengthy, it's also very narrow in width. So when it's narrow in width, that means your location of the areas are very small. Based on this green, which is so lengthy, we always remember that we have three locations. Locations from the blue, which is at the back end. Location in the white is in the center. The one in front is the red. From this type of green that you see, it is always at the back of the green, which is the most difficult position. On top of that, on the right hand side of the screen, where you see a mound which is rolling down towards the rough. If you miss the green on the on the back end, your ball will roll downwards to the rough. So that is also equally makes you the green a very different green. Not only that, you also remember that you can see, look at the green. There is a two tier, a tier in front and a tier at the back. So that divides into a two green. So they name it as two tier green. For this reason. We see that always when your pin position is at the back, you will find the difficulties in playing the hole. Thank you so much for joining me at the Sultan Abdul Aziz Shah Golf and Country Club. I really enjoyed every minute on the golf course and I might even head back to the clubhouse for some more of their delicious food before I head home. I'll see you in the next episode of The Turn. This is Maraika, signing off. Remember to tune into the next episode of The Turn and don't forget to follow Gila Golfers on social media. The Turn is sponsored by Cobra Puma Golf, Volvo Sam Dobby Swedish Auto.